My only response to the professor's introduction is that it is great to be back home. <laughs> At such a beautiful setting, on such a glorious day, it would surely be impossible for any speaker to detract from the occasion. Well, do not underestimate me. <laughs> when a judge speaks in court, he almost always disappoints half of those present. It is only on an occasion such as this, outside court, that he has a fair chance of disappointing everyone. We are here to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the dedication of the Jackson Center. We do so on an especially significant date. 59 years ago today, the Supreme Court handed down its decision in Brown versus Board of Education, which declared that segregating public school students by race violates the 14th Amendment's guarantee of equal protection. Justice Jackson was, of course, a member of the court that handed down that momentous decision and began the process of undoing the court's grave error in the 19, 1896 case of Plessy versus Ferguson. Now, just weeks before Brown was announced, on March 30, 1954, Justice Jackson suffered a serious heart attack. In mid-May, he was still recovering in a Washington hospital. But symbolic of his resolve, he left the hospital on Monday morning, May 17, and journeyed to the court to be present for the announcement of the Brown decision. Tragically, Justice Jackson suffered another heart attack a few months later and passed away on October 9, 1954. But he left behind an inspiring legacy of a public servant and true patriot. This center stands as a magnificent monument to this great justice. It has attracted numerous visitors from our court, as you've heard. Exactly 10 years ago yesterday, Chief Justice William Rehnquist presided over the dedication of the center. Rehnquist was, of course, law clerk to Robert Jackson. And as it has been noted, I had the privilege of being law clerk to William Rehnquist. And when I was practicing law, I also carried the briefcase of Barrett Prettyman, another Jackson clerk, also here today. So I feel a special tie to the Jackson Center through those connections, and I am especially proud to share this anniversary celebration. This center is an appropriate monument to its namesake, who was well known for his learning and eloquence. The center provides a dynamic home for study, dialogue, and discussion here in the heart of Jackson country. It is easy for those of us who live in Washington to forget that Robert Jackson was shaped by this beautiful rural region.